Welcome back to NRM 638, Python Scripting for ArcGIS Applications, Spring Semester 2015. This is an e-learning class at the University of Alaska, Fairbanks. In this session, we're going to work with the shape field that's in point, line, or polygon feature classes. So for example, we'll start with, from our test geo database, we've got some polyline shapes representing streams, and we'll extract some invisible properties from this shape field. So the first thing you need to do is go to the Blackboard website and we'll download some field calculator files. Okay, so from the Blackboard website, if you go to Python scripts and then week two ArcMap field calculator, and then download these last four calculation files. So the first one is multi-part check, then vertex count single part lines, vertex count multi-part lines, and then line direction. So for each of those four files, right mouse click, save link as or save target as, and save it to your own personal folder on your computer. And then from your test geo database, add streamlines to your ArcMap document. And that has several fields. So if we look at our layer properties and then the fields tab, one of the fields is multi-part and that's a text field and it's three characters wide. So that will contain yes, if the line is a multi-part line and no, if it's just a single part line. And then we've got another field called vertex count and that's going to be an integer field that's going to contain the number of vertices that each line is composed of. And then we have our third field, which is a text field, and that will test whether each line, its direction is going upstream, it would return a yes, and if it's going downstream, will return a no. So that's a text field and it's three characters wide. Okay, so let's open the attribute table for our streamlines. And the first thing we're going to do is check for each line, is it multi-part or is there just one part per line? So if we right mouse click and go to field calculator, load multi-part check.cal. And then our parser is Python. Okay, so what this is going to do is we're going to say multi-part check is our function name. And we're going to pass the shape field to our function. Field has a property called dot part count. So if dot part count is greater than one, then we'll return yes, it's a multi part line. And if it's not greater than one, we'll return no, that it's just a single part line. And then just OK to execute this function. So most of our lines are just single part lines. And we've got one line that's a multi-part line. So we need to keep that in mind when we try to run a tool to count how many vertices each line is composed of. So that's our next function. Vertex count, that's where we're going to execute our next field calculator. So then we'll load vertex count single part. So this function is going to assume every line is a single part line. And once again, we need our parser to be the Python parser. So the way this works is we take our shape field, pass it to our function, and then our count starts at zero. And then we'll get the first part of every line. So in this case, the first part is the only part of each line. Here, the first part is just one of many parts for this multi-part line. And then we get the first vertex. And then we just keep getting vertices from the line until we end out of So while we have vertices, we just increment count equals count plus one, get the next vertex until we run out of vertices, and then return count. So that will return the number of vertices each line is composed of and then just OK. So for example, this first line is composed of 13 vertices. So let's highlight that row and double click to go to that selected line. OK, so we could check this. Does this line really have 13 vertices? So to check it, we'll run the tool feature vertices. 
So let's search for feature vertices. So feature vertices to points. So we'll take that selected line and we'll output it to points. And I'll just call it line points. And then just OK. So then how many points did that selected line have? So then if we look at the attribute table, it indeed has 13 points. And then we'll just remove that and clear our selections. Okay, you'll recall we do have one multi-part line. So basically this vertex count was just for the first part of that multi-part line. So I'll select that multi-part line. So we have to modify our field calculation with multi-part lines. So we'll load vertex count multi-part lines. So it's a slightly more complicated calculation. So basically what we do is we say, okay, four parts from part zero up to the total number of parts we have will loop through. So for I in the range from zero up to the number of parts that we have. So basically in shapefield.partCount returns part count is a property and that's how many line parts this line is composed of. So we'll get the ith part and then we'll count how many vertices are in each part and then just OK. And when we treated it as a single part, it counted seven vertices. And I have to go Python parser and then just OK. So now it has the true number of vertices that this selected line is composed of. It's a multi-part line and it's composed of 11 vertices. And then once again, we'll clear our selection. Okay, the final problem is each line we want to go upstream. And the question is, are there lines that do not go upstream? So we're gonna do a check in this field that's a text field and we'll return yes if the line's going upstream and no if the line's going downstream. So we'll Go to the field calculator, Python parser, load a function, line direction. Okay, so what this does is it checks that each line is going from south to north, which in this case represents upstream. So for this line from south to north would be going upstream. For this line, south to north would be going upstream. So basically what we do is we for each shape field, we have a property, get the first point, and then from that first point, get the Y value. And then for each shape field, each line, get the last point, so the last vertex, and get the Y value of that last vertex. And then if our NY is greater than our starting Y, then we know the line is going from south to north or going upstream. So if that's true, we're going to return yes. And if that's false, then the direction's going from north to south, so it's going downstream, so we'll return no. And then we can execute this function OK. And once again, I need to turn on the Python parser, and then OK. So there's two lines that are not going upstream, so we could sort ascending. So that line's not going upstream and that line's not going upstream. And we could double check. We'll select these two lines. I hold the shift key down and select these two lines. And then zoom to selected. So these two lines are not going upstream and we could check by going to our symbology. So under streamlines properties, symbology, we'll put an end, uh, arrow at the end of each line. So arrow at the end of each line. 
and I'll make this a width of two. So you can see that indeed these two lines are going downstream rather than upstream. And we've selected them, so now we could fix that using a tool called Flip Line. So if we search, so flip those two selected lines and then just OK. So now those two lines are going upstream. So we'll clear our selection and redo our calculation. So then if we go to our upstream check, and then we'll execute this function one more time, and then now all our lines are indeed going upstream. Okay, so that's just some examples of working with the shape field, and we'll do a lot more later on in the semester when we work with um, something called cursors. Okay, so if you go to the Blackboard website, I've got some scripting assignments for you on using the field calculator and Python to solve some GIS problems.